Welcome to BizWire, I'm Joseph Nordstrom in Beijing. As the role of cybersecurity in U.S.-China relations has grown, two new reports have given companies new reasons to worry. And while the threat to America's private sector companies has long been apparent, a recent New York Times article and a Verizon study, respectively, underscore the dangers of the present situation for startups, as well as the more systemic risks that Chinese hackers pose to critical infrastructure in the United States. These reports, coupled with a Mandiant security official statement that China-based cyber attacks on U.S. companies remain prevalent, run counter to the positive developments on the U.S.-China intergovernmental front. The two countries have established a new cybersecurity working group and are seeking to frame the issue as a global problem on which they can cooperate rather than as a bilateral area of dispute and competition. Large American companies have long been known to be targeted by Chinese hackers. For example, between 2007 and 2009, Chinese cyber spies reportedly stole several terabytes of data from defense contractors working on the Joint Strike Fighter, the costliest weapons program in U.S. history. More recently, following the February release of the Mandiant Report, several companies, including Apple, revealed that they had been victims of China-based cyber intrusions. Yet it would be a mistake to think that these large companies are either the only ones being targeted or the entities most vulnerable to cyber attack. According to James Lewis, a senior fellow at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, D.C., all companies doing business in China, as well as those who compete against Chinese firms, should expect hackers to target their most confidential files. While prominent attacks of major banks, news organizations and technology giants garner the headlines, it's tech-driven startups and growth companies that are often more vulnerable to attack. The logic here is simple as the size and financial power of these companies typically means that buying top-notch protection in the cyber realm is prohibitively expensive, making their ideas subject to theft. At the same time, these ideas, which have the potential to disrupt entire industries, are often the only assets these early-stage companies have. Some analysts say that the consequences then are severe, not just for these firms themselves, but potentially for the American economy in general, which is driven by innovation and entrepreneurship. There has been some good news, however, regarding U.S.-China bilateral discussions of cybersecurity. On April 13th, Secretary of State John Kerry announced that the two sides had agreed to establish a working group on cybersecurity. While the establishment of the working group isn't likely to yield immediate cooperation and results, it is both an indicator that the issue is at least being institutionalized in the bilateral relationship and a welcome step forward for those hoping that diplomacy can help dampen some of the heated rhetoric coming out of Washington, Beijing and beyond as hacking is not just a bilateral U.S.-China issue, but a global problem. Well, this is BizWire on the Blue Ocean Network. Stay tuned for more in Economic Insight.